the U.S. women's soccer team is taking charge in a major fight off the field, suing for fair pay this just three months before they will defend their title at the Women's World Cup tournament. Stars Megan Rapinoe and Alex Morgan will join us in a moment, but first, Adrian Bankert is here with more on this. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning to you, Cecilia. Good morning, everybody. These players are arguably among the most famous athletes on the planet. They've taken their long fight for equal pay along with complaints over medical treatment and coaching to the next level. That's it. Game over. The drought is over. The U.S. wins the 2015 Women's World Cup. They're world champions. I'm faster. I'm stronger. I'm not what I was when I was 30. I'm better. But this morning, 28 members of the U.S. women's soccer team, including superstars Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino, and Carly Lloyd, are suing the U.S. Soccer Federation, arguing in a newly filed lawsuit that they've been consistently paid less than their male counterparts, even when outperforming them on the global stage. The gold is gone to the United States of America. According to the lawsuit, if each team played and won 20 non-tournament games a year, female players would earn a maximum of $99,000, while similarly ranked male players would earn an average of more than $260,000. The lawsuit also highlights pay discrepancy at the World Cup, alleging that the pay was so skewed that when the men's team lost in round 16 of the World Cup in 2014, they received bonuses totaling more than $5 million. The following year, when the women won it all, they received less than two million. And overnight, U.S. Soccer released a statement pointing out that the women's national team reached a collective bargaining agreement with the organization two years ago, adding U.S. Soccer has faithfully and consistently worked with the U.S. women's national team players and staff to provide the team everything it needs. And U.S. Soccer adds that their commitment to women includes creating two in elite international tournaments and adding additional staff focused only on the U.S. women's national team. In their statement, the organization says they look forward to enriching the women's game today and into the future. Cecilia. Okay, Adrian, let's get right to it. Joining us now from Paris are superstars Megan Rapinoe and Alex Morgan of the U.S. women's soccer team. Good morning to you both, ladies. We saw those numbers in Adrian's piece just now. You say men can make more than double what you earn in a year despite you doing the same job, but this is more than just about pay equity for you guys. Megan, what other inequities are you talking about? Um, I think it is much more about pay equity. I think obviously that's the, the hot button issue, but in order to have, I think, a fair and a balanced conversation around compensation, we need to look at everything. We need to look at the way the youth teams are funded. We need to look at the way our staff, our coaching staff, our medical staff is funded. We need to look at promotion and branding and marketing and sponsorship, all of that. Um, and until we do, until we have equity and equality of, of the men's and women's team on both those sides, we can't really say, oh, the men make this and the women make this. Um, oh. We don't feel like we're funded equally um, from top to bottom, and, and that's really what we're fighting for, sort of a holistic approach to both programs for the Federation. Alex, what do you say to, to people who might suggest that the men might bring in more revenue overall and therefore they deserve to be paid more? Well, I think one of the biggest problems, as Megan just pointed out, was the investment isn't there from the ground up. And so I think it's unfair to come to that conclusion without equal amount of investment um, among the youth through all through the senior national teams. Um, I also think that we have um, created a lot of revenue for U.S. soccer throughout the throughout the years. And you even saw from 2015, we had the most watched um, U.S. soccer game in history with the Women's World Cup final. So I think that those um, claims are really arbitrary. You guys have, have both said that this is uh, not just about soccer and women on the field, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is about standing up for, for all people, particularly young girls. What's the big picture here? I think the big picture ultimately um, is just giving that message that you should fight for what you believe in. You should fight for uh, what you feel you earned and never give up. Um, it, it is difficult at times. Uh, sometimes it feels like um, a David and Goliath type situation um, where you maybe have less resources or have less experience in it. But, you know, we know in our hearts and, and we know um, with the facts that we have that um, we're on the right side of this. And I think just looking sort of at the broader picture, um, I don't think anybody can argue that there's gender inequities in this world, that there's a pay gap, that there's pay discrepancies. So for us, um, it's, it's not only about leaving our sport in a better place, leaving it better um, for the young girls that will come after, but just in general, inspiring 
women around the world um, to stand up for what they believe in. They have an ally in us. Uh, we are with them. We support them. Um, and we will continue this fight as long as we need to. You know, and one I of the think big. If I could add to that, the, sure. the men have also come out and said that they are in support of us as well. And so we respect them so much for that. You know, it's great to see that support from them, from um, a lot of our sponsors as well, um, from women all around the world, both inside and outside of the sport. Um, you know that you're you're doing something right when you gain that support from people around you to help lift you up. One of the really big questions this morning for you both is the World Cup. It's just three months away. If this isn't resolved, no expectation that it will be by then. Will you boycott? I don't think it's ever been in our minds no. to uh, step <laughs> off the field. You know, it's always we've been looking forward to the World Cup for three years now, um, even dating back to the collective bargaining agreement two years ago. Uh, we felt like what our goal was was equal pay at that point but what we ended up getting to without being um, locked out or striking uh, was uh, the agreement that we made two years ago and it's it was progress it wasn't what we had hoped for um, but it was um, there were gains during that process and so that is continue that is going to continue to stay the same and that we want to continue to to um, play for our country at the highest stage this Al summer in France. Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino, thanks to you both this morning. You know, they say they're just trying to leave the game in a better place. And they're working hard for they it. They sure are. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.